What do you do when you are returning serve and you're trying to decide, you know, should I follow my return to net? And it's actually a uh, relatively nuanced situation. And the first question I would ask is, is the server serving and volleying or serving and staying back? If the server is serving and volleying, what can happen is they come in, you hit a return, you follow your return to the net, and very often they can hit a volley that's gonna be kinda at your feet, right? Because they're gonna have an opportunity to you know, maybe volley around the service line, but you're probably gonna be in no man's land. So the chances of you popping this ball up are significantly uh, higher, or there's at least a decent chance it's going to happen. So I would be pretty careful in this case. Obviously, a ton of it depends on the quality of, uh, of your return um, and uh, you know, how much they can do with that, with that volley. But a good alternative is you actually uh, stay back in this case and you let your partner clean up if you hit a uh, if you hit a good return. So what would happen is you'd get the serve coming in, you would hit a return, and when the return's coming over here, so basically the returner's partner is going to hold position until the ball gets by the service partner. Once it does, then this person would move like this, and then right before the server's about to hit, like right before they're about to hit the ball, they would look to see if the server is bending down to uh, hit a volley, or if their racket is up here. If the racket's up here, they're gonna just hang out and uh, kind of brace for impact. But if the server, the racket is going down, then as soon as they're about to hit, I would just uh, move into the middle of court and this ball's almost certainly gonna come back cross court and you volley it and put it away. And if they don't get it, then the return partner would retreat back here, server continues to close, but then the returner in this case can uh, be here and then rip another ground stroke and try and set uh, their partner up to, uh, uh, to pick off the next shot. So that can be sort of an interim step where you're still, your team is still being aggressive and trying to get the net player involved. The net player just isn't you. You're hanging back as the returner trying to set up uh, your partner by ripping ground strokes. Now the other thing that can happen, let's actually just reset this stuff. All right, here we go. So what happens if you, as the returner, want to come to net after your return and the server is staying back now? Well, this is a situation where there's a couple things you need to look at, right? Is uh, do you want to return, or excuse me, do you want to return and approach right away? Um, if, you can, if you can do that on a second serve, that tends to work better. On a first serve, that's going to be more difficult. On a second serve, a lot of the time, you can take a good swing at the ball. But then the question is, what type of return should you hit? If you drive your return, normal ground stroke, that actually gives the server a lot of options. You know, if we worked, we worked with Martina Navratilova, you might have seen um, some of our segments with her. But one of the main things she said, she said, if you hit a shot, kind of a standard ground stroke, or a volley that is deep and kind of high, waist high, this person can do a lot with it. They can go down the line, they can hit a cross court, they can lob you. So there's a lot of options and, you know, at least the folks I play with, a lot of them have great swords. So if they get a look at it, you're sort of like, I don't know what's gonna happen here. An alternative can be to, especially if you can step inside the uh, baseline, is to hit a, is to chip and charge, right? And leave it low here particularly against players, if they're staying back, right? If they're serving and staying back, they probably don't like to come to net. So if you pull them in and you're able to get into reasonable court position, then this shot, they're gonna have to hit up on it. And then that gives you an opportunity, either your partner or you, to hit down on your next shot. So one of the pieces of advice, just generally speaking, uh, when you're deciding, should I come to net, is how do I orchestrate this so that the volleys I'm hitting, the volleys my partner are hitting, we're hitting down on the ball. So in other words to think about it is, 
are the volleys we hit going to be uh, when the ball is above the net? And then how do we set it up so that all the volleys villain is hitting are below the net? So they have to hit up, and then that, of course, by hitting up, that means we can hit down on those balls. So that's sort of the chess game with doubles, right, is how do you orchestrate all that stuff. Um, so it's a, little bit, uh, it's a little bit nuanced, right? It goes back to uh, when I talked about if this person stays back, right, let's say you drive that return and they now have a, a sword, well, they can probably dip it, right? They can get that ball down low at your feet, and then that gives their partner the opportunity to pick off anything you just hit back. So there's a lot of, doubles is actually really, really complicated um, in many respects because you're trying to figure out all these you know, little nuances, hitting up, hitting down, um, and just finding the weak shots that you can exploit. Hope you like that strategy session. And the stuff we just talked about comes from these two playbooks, the singles playbook and the doubles playbook. And if you wanna check them out, if you want a peek inside, well, click the link that just popped up. If you're on mobile, might need to scroll down to the description. And if you're on the website, well, there's a link somewhere around here that'll take you to these two playbooks. They are awesome. I'll take you inside and you can pick up a copy if you think they will help you play better tennis.